Folks, I, I feel in my heart we're so close to that line now. We're, we're as in the days in Sodom, when the, the Sodomites were, were trying to find the door and break down the door to, to force the innocents, as it was, to be partakers of their sin. They had crossed the line that cannot be crossed in the kingdom of God. It was, it was at that point that the, angel took, the angels took the hands of Lot and his, his wife and his daughters and took them out. It's, it's a foreshadowing of what's going to happen in our generation as it's happened in generations before us. And can you imagine the mockery which he had to endure while building a boat in a place where some had said it never rained? Can you imagine? You're building this boat and everybody's walking by and it's, look at that stupid old man. You know, it's just like some people, if they hear this message online, say, look at that stupid old preacher in New York City talking about the judgment of God coming. Second Peter chapter three, and verses three to 10. This is what Peter says about our day. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So in the last days, scoffers will rise. And, and folks, these are people in the church. You understand? These, many of these scoffers are gonna be behind pulpits. Jesus himself said there's gonna be great religious deception in the last days, many are going to be deceived and the deception will increase as the days get darker. The false prophets will be there all the way through and they will literally start abounding if they're not already here in the house of God. And the scoffers arise because other voices are rising up and saying, get right with God because Jesus is coming. And they will, people will maybe take a, a copy of the message and give it to them and they will say, oh, don't listen to that. Oh, those old guys are always talking about gloom and doom. Listen, this world's still got lots to offer us. Live your best days, be your best you now. There's so much ahead of us. Stock market is gonna bounce back. You're gonna be able to get that job in that house. And the whole focus is not on eternal things, but on the things of this world. And they say, don't listen to these guys because since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue from the beginning of creation. Listen, Paul believed this and, and he died and Jesus didn't come. Peter believed it, he died, Jesus didn't come. So-and-so said it, he died, Jesus didn't come. So why would you listen to this guy or these guys now? Because all things are carrying on just as they have from the beginning of creation. But Peter goes on in verse five and says, for this they willfully forget. Not, it's not negligence, it's willful. They put it away. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. In the book of Hebrews, the writer talks about a season where everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. And if your confidence in Christ can be shaken, it will be shaken. But there's a confidence that God builds, builds into the heart when we are built on the foundation of the truth of God's word. Remember Jesus said, whoever hears my sayings and does them, I will liken him to a man who built his house upon a rock. And when the rains came and when the floods came and when the winds beat against that house, it did not fall for it was founded upon a rock. Beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In other words, Peter is saying the only reason the world hasn't been judged now is because of the kindness of our God. He waits. There's, if there's still a heart that's looking for him, if there's still somewhere, somebody sighing in the night and saying, oh God, are you...
he talks about. So if you're going to get right with God, might be a good time to think about that. In the time of, of judgment that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 24, he likened it to the season of Noah in Genesis chapter 7. It talks about the people who entered into the ark, Noah and his family entered in, male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And now the flood was on the earth forty days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. God shut the door. There is a season, there is a time where mercy ends. There's a time when the door is shut. You know, in the scriptures it says, because they received not the love of the truth, God gave them over to delusion that they should believe a lie. There's a moment. Hell is bad enough as it is. And we don't understand what being in a place for eternity where God is not is like. You think of all the people that have ignored it for all the centuries since Christ. You imagine if, if we could just have a window into hell this very moment, if we could just open the gate. You imagine the screams down there. Could you imagine the the intercession that's going on, not for themselves, they know there's no, no, no chance, but as Jesus said in the scriptures, this, this man who was in hell cried out, Father Abraham, send somebody to my family. Send somebody to those who are still alive on the earth and warn them about this place. Hell is a real place, just as heaven is a real place. But in the day of God's judgment on the earth, the scripture says those who took seriously the provision of God. The, the, ark, uh, the ark that was built in Noah's day was a type of salvation in Jesus Christ. And those who took seriously the provision of God went inside the ark and then God closed the door. And the, as the judgment came down on the earth, the ark was lifted up above it. That's the promise of God for his church in this last day. As the judgment of God comes upon this world with famines and wars and pestilences and, and unbelievable conflict and hardship and difficulty, even the stars of heaven being shaken, the scripture says, the people of God, as in the days of Noah, are going to be lifted up out of this world by the power, by the presence and by the mercy of God. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The trumpet of God is going to sound. The dead in Christ will be raised first then we who are alive and remain will be gathered together with them and so shall we ever be in the presence of the Lord. I've often thought, I said, oh God, let the rapture of the church happen while we're in church singing, while we're preaching the gospel, while people are coming forward and receiving Christ as the Savior. Let the trumpet sound and let us go into the heavens. What a shout that's going to be. What a day that's going to be. What a glorious moment that's going to be when we realize, God, it was worth the ridicule. It was, it was worth the struggle. It was, it was worth standing when everyone else was falling. It, it was worth holding the truth when everyone else was letting it fall through their fingers. Oh, God, it was worth it. Oh, God, thank you for saving my family. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers and not letting my children or my grandchildren or my cousins or my brothers or my sisters or my aunts and uncles die in their sin. God, thank you for moving heaven and earth to answer my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the courage to stand and preach the gospel in an unpopular time. Thank you for giving us the backbone not to cave under the scorn of men. Guard your mind. Paul the Apostle says in Ephesians 6, everything in Ephesians 6 about put on the whole armor of God is all about the Word of God. It's all about a biblical worldview, folks. Put on the helmet of salvation. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Paul says, whatever is good, whatever's pure, whatever's of virtue, whatever's of good report, whatever's praiseworthy, think on these things and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Put that helmet on your head the helmet of God's Word. Don't believe everything that everybody says. Check it yourself in the Word of God. Don't even believe what I'm telling you. Check it in the Word of God for yourself. Make sure your house. Make sure, secure the windows, secure the doors. Make sure the thief can't get into your house. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, the things in your mind from the Word of God have got to go deeper and into your heart. You have to love the Word of God. Oh, how I Love thy word, the psalmist says. Oh, 
God, it's so sweet to my taste. Even the things that are bitter are sweet to my taste. I don't try to just eat the things I like and put the rest of it away, but oh God, I love your word. Let it go from your head and get into your heart. Put on that breastplate of righteousness. Put on the shoes and put it, let your loins be girt about with truth. Your loin speaks of the totality of your being. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things are passed away and all things are become new. Say, God, not just my head, not just my heart, but the totality of my being. Let your word, oh God, change me. God, make me into the person you want me to be. Don't let me be led astray from what you have for my life. Let your plan be my plan. Let your journey be my journey. Let your words be my words. God, everything that you are and you have for me, let it be who I've become. Let there be a yearning in your inward parts. So God, I want the life that you have for me. And I don't care who laughs. I don't care who mocks what I'm building. Let them mock and let them laugh because I'm going into eternity with God and eternity is a long, 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 long time.